Howdy folks, I hope you are well. My name is Nick, we're on the Commodore 64. I'm looking at a game called Kane, it's a western, published by Mastertronic in 1985. You take control of the uh, sheriff called Marshal McGraw over four different levels, although there is a trainer, so you can jump to any level you can. But essentially, you're trying to avoid a war between the Pal Faces and the Wagari Indians because the, uh, the white settlers are trying to build a railway through the Holy Valley of the Indians, and they're not very happy. A good tune playing here, it's William Tell's Overture, so we'll see how far I can get on this one. It's level one, here comes McGraw, and the first one I'm shooting ducks for some reason. Now we angle the arrow with this um, uh, target thing, it's a bit like clay pigeon shooting this. You'll see the amount of birdies killed on the bottom left. Uh, we have to get a certain number to progress to the next stage. Now I've already reviewed this game on the ZX Spectrum, this one's got a bit more colour to it and I'm quite liking the thing. If you had this game back in the day, let me know. Also come out on the Anstrad CPC. Right, I never, on the Spectrum version at least, I never went all the way through. Um, I was good at getting to the first two levels and the horse jumping thing was a bit of a problem. That's now that one. Now this seems a little bit easier than the Spectrum version, or maybe I'm just getting a bit better at it. Now on the right they aren't pyramids, they're the Wagari Indians um, teepees or wigwams, one of the two. Teepees or wigwams, I'm not sure. So this is the valley, I'm not sure why we're shooting these ducks, maybe we're going to have them for dinner or something. But I think I've shot enough. There's two yellow balls down the bottom that have uh, shown up. Come on Nick, you can do this thing. I think I need about one more, don't I? Hear, the, hear those drums beating. Right, okay, stage two, and this is the bit I struggle with. The overture. Right, he can't run that way. Go McGraw, jump. Now, any connection with these obstacles, you're doomed. We've got three, oops, we've got 3.15 miles to go. I think we've got about three lives left. We've got about one minute 42 to be able to do it. So let's get a run up. Good scrolling going on. Hey, oh no. The horse is stuck in mud for some reason. That's it, that's that's game over big nose. Now you can jump, as I say, as a trainer, you can jump to any level that you want. So look, bow and arrow, horse ride one, shoot out, which is the best bit I think, and horse ride two. Ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, bum 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 We're stress busting here folks, jump. If you're liking the channel, please consider subscribing. It's all about, well, it's not about expert game players, I just proved there. It's about beating stress and having a bit of a laugh. So if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And a big, big, big thank you to the members which are keeping this thing on the road. We're Commodore 64 in people. The city's called Kane. We're controlling McGraw and he's trying to avoid a war. But well, he's not doing very well because he's falling off his, his horse a lot. Yeah, so it's not Red Dead Redemption 2, is it? But it's 1985 and I believe this might have been uh, a budget title. Come on, Nick, at least jump over three things. Right, go. I hope he's got insurance. Right, I'm going to do it this time. Here we go. Boof. He's there. Over one. Come on, mate. Oh, over two. Over three. Oh, that's tricky, that. It's tricky getting the right distance between the two. I think the Spectrum version... See, the sh shooting bit at the start was easier on this version. Um, the jumping seemed easier on the ZX Spectrum version. Seemed like you had a bit more room to make the jump. Four miles to go. Maybe you should have got the train, McGraw. Right, over one. Come on, come on, come on. Over two. Yeah, there's not enough. There's not enough space there to make the jump. You got to do that pixel perfect, or you've had it. Shall I have another go, or should I jump to? Should I jump to somewhere else? Right, I'll surprise you. Bum, 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 bum. Right, okay, last go, and then I'll go to the shootout. But this, that last bit, whoa, this last bit needs to be precise. Up! Yeah, so you need to be spot perfect there. I wish there was a cheat so you could ride Pegasus, the winged horse from Greek, Greek mythology, and then you could just fly all over the top. Uh, other Western games on the Commodore 64, this is my other last go, are uh, West, <laughs> are West Bank. The Nincompoop Kid. I did the Wild Bunch come out on the Commodore 64. I'll have to check that down. Um, I loved it on the, uh, the ZX Spectrum. It was rather cool. Come on, Kane. And your McCain's oven chips. Right, come on, Nick. Uh, it's getting a bit addictive now. A bit of parallax scrolling with the clouds, I think. A little bit. And down the front also. Jump! Oh, this horse is a wally. He'd never be in the Epsom Derby or the Grand National. Because uh, he jumps like a Nincompoop. Nincompoop horse. 
I prefer to uh, get on that dubbing uh, from Rain to Ghost. Right, shootout time. Now, watch out for sneaky people. If you run out of bullets, the bullets are represented by the magenta things in the middle. If you run out of bullets, you can run out to the uh, right and get more. You don't want to stand in the same place too long to shoot him, or else uh, you'll be dead. Right, kill one bad guy, you can see. Right, they'll come from uh, different windows or round corners of stuff. If I get the right press fire button? Yes, there we go. I've reloaded. Good. I don't know if that is on the right loading stuff, but anyway. We need to shoot as many as we can to avoid a war. Scores going up there. I shot another one of the wallies. They're all in white, so they could they could be anywhere, folks. This is a good bit of 3D, isn't it? This is good. If they had a game like this within the Wild Bunch game, would be an ideal. Oh, don't stay in the same place too long. Nice bit of screaming as well. I like the screaming. Scream, man. Oops. You see, they're shooting at me as well. We've almost, we're almost there. We've got one of the yellow ball down the bottom, which means we're doing quite good. I bet I stayed. Oh, I got shot. Ah, he says. I took a bullet to the belly button, and that's not good for long term survival. Welcome to Kane. Howdy, stranger. What name do you go by? If I was in the Wild West, I'd live in a town called Hot Potato. Welcome to Hot Potato. What's your name, sir? Right, come on, Kane. We'll have another go. Let's do a bit of shooting. Watch out. So, there's one on the window there. Buff. I think I stayed in the same place too long there. And I've taken... Oh, no. I bought the big one again. This bloke needs a sort of like... You know, like in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, or Fistful of Dollars, where he um, has a slate. Clint Eastwood has a slate under his poncho as a bulletproof vest. Aim for the heart, Rojo. That's what we need to do. Say like that. Watch those movies, if you haven't already. Uh, Italian spaghetti western, so I'm clean. It's good. A fistful of dollars. The good, the bad, the ugly, and for a few dollars more. They're my favourite westerns. But I like Unforgiven as well, uh, also by uh, Clint uh, Eastwood, directed by him. And, and Morgan Freeman in as well, as uh, not Ned Flanders, but someone, someone called Ned. Right, okay. Ned Flanders wouldn't have been good in the Wild West. Yeah. William Money, it was good, that. That's a, that's a great line in Unforgiven, as I try and do this at the same time. Yeah, my name's William Money. I kill women and children. I killed just about everything that Walter crawled at one time or another. And now I'm here to kill you, little Bill. What you done to Ned? And he deserved it. It was Gene Hackman who was the uh, the sheriff there. Yeah, little Bill. I think that was his name. Good. What's that? Unforgiven. Right, take that. And right, right, I've killed four bad guys now. That's good. Oh, well, come on. He's running around, trying not to get shot. Right, let's get away from that. I don't, there's no time limit on this. With, you see the by, bad guys left on the left? Uh, that's in light green under the, under bad guys left. And there's bad guys killed on the right. So it's going to take a while to do this. Um, out of the four stages, this and the duck one are my favourite. Probably this is my favourite one. The duck one second. The two horse ones are my least favourite just because I'm, I'm not very good at it. But if you can go all the way through, it starts on level one. If you get all the way through, it goes to level two, then level three, and gradually getting more difficult each time but it's, as I say it's not about expert gameplay it's about seeing what the games would have played like back in the day how you would have got on on your first or second go would you have gone back to it would you have been um, worried that you spent your pocket money on it now although the bits of this game are tr um, tricky um, because you can jump to any stage at any time I would have forgiven it for the difficulty there and I would have loved the thing it's like, like having four games in one really so it, it, I would have just kept playing this bit and and the and the duck shooting up the bottom one. Good. And the William Tell Overture. It's not bad having a game with that tune in it. Um, not too many horses in this place. So, Kay, so Kay's got a saloon, a bank, and a store, and whatever that hut is up the top. What could there be? Uh, maybe that's the blacksmith. If I go to the store, I can buy 0 0.1 of a horse, as I used to do in the Wild Bunch, if you're aware of that joke. And I've, oh, I've bitten it again. I was doing quite well there. It's impatience that was getting uh, the better of me. Go, William Tell. A Mastertronic production. Level 1, 2, or 3. Dooby dooby doo ba da ba bo. Right, here we go. This is level 4. Again, we're, the, we're racing against the train, and if I was jumping over stuff. Hey, those two obstacles are way too close together, unless we can jump over both at the same time. Yes, I need to cheat where I can run through stuff. Or maybe I have to jump over both those at the same time. We'll have a go, but you can't get too close, or the hoofs get stuck. 
If your hoofs are getting stuck, then let me know. Good animation on the horsey here. Right, come on, keep up with the train. We need to get to the front of the train. We are we doing? See, I got. See, that's a problem. I got a bit close to that cow dung pile, whatever that was, and I couldn't make. I couldn't make the jump over the first one. If you're familiar with the game C5 Fly, maybe I could jump over it in a C5. They, they got good suspension, those things. Not like this horse. Right, come on, horsey. This is another go. He looks a bit like Zoro. Oh, yeah, his back legs got caught. I don't think it's possible to make that. Probably. You, you have to, as I say, with the horse stuff, good as it is, you have to be pixel perfect all the way through, or it's going to be utter doom for you. Right. I go. Last, last go again. Come on, Dobbin. Come on, Dobbin. Look at the legs go. See, I jumped a bit late at that time and then bashed into that bush. I mean, what are these bushes made out of? Solid concrete or something? Man. Man alive, Clive. Right, okay. Let's, let's have one last proper go at the thing then. Shooting ducks with arrows. Shall I get a bit of forward boof? That's one. I can hear Indian native drums below. Two. Don't have to get all of them. Three. Cool, this is getting good, see? He's good at the bonus. I think I think Kane should... Uh, no, I think uh, McGraw should uh, join the uh, Indians. He seems to be much handier with a bow and arrow than he is... Than he, I wasn't aiming at that one. Than, than he is with a gun. Come on, Marshall McGraw. I used to think, first of all, that the character itself was called Kane. No, but that, that's the name of the town. This is Marshall McGraw. So he's trying to avoid a war, or trying to prevent a war, between the Pale Faces, so the settlers, and the native Wigwari Indians. I think that's a made-up Indian tribe, but anyway. We don't want to build a train a train thing through here, surely. Surely that's surely that's enough now. I've got two arrows left, according to the thing in the middle. See if I can get at least one of them. If you're a duck, don't fly through here. They look a bit like the uh, the pigeon things from Manic Miner. One left. Well, I got him again. Tough luck, big nose, as was, was a familiar phrase in the Old West. Right, so back to horse in, and this could be game over quite quickly. Go, 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 McGraw. Hope you got a better horse this time. It's good that he plays the music in this bit. It doesn't play the music in the uh, the duck thing, does it? Or else, good, good, yes! Hey, it's a bit of Go, go, go. Maybe we'll do it. It's over. Oh, see, as soon as I get two items quite close together, I, I, I ain't got enough run up here. See, look. Maybe you should get some sort of saddle or some stirrups or something. But anyway, overall, I really like that game. I mean, the horse bits for me are more or less impossible. But, um, you know, it's comparable to the Spectrum. I like the music there as well. And I would have been very pleased with this game back in the day. So, hope you liked having a look at that one. That was Kane on the Commodore 64, published by Mastertronic in 1985. If you've got any comments about this game, similar games, or anything retro, then please put that below. You're always more than welcome. Until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.